Did you know that there are actually foods that can lower your cortisol levels? So cortisol is one of the important stress hormones that you have inside of your body. When you have an important work project dumped on your lap on Friday that has to be done by Monday, cortisol is one of the hormones that is released in the body basically to deal with this new perceived threat. But obviously you don't want to have to rely on pharmaceuticals or medication unless you absolutely have to as a last resort. So in this video, we'll discuss some herbs and also food grade medicine that you can use to help lower your cortisol levels. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's jump in. Now, my entire life story is basically one of an anxious person who is prone to hypersensitivity and way too many stress hormones coursing through his body. You know, some people just have that nervous system where they're the Bernese mountain dog that aren't easily aroused, or they're the chihuahua, that anyone that gets within two inches of them, they're barking and trying to attack them and chew their foot off. The way I view this is almost a mirror of the nervous system, right? When you think of that little chihuahua, I mean, we've had a chihuahua, my parents, and I hate to build on the chihuahua stereotype, but it was the nastiest dog we've ever owned. You know, and I was trying to figure out why she was like that. And I thought about, you know, if I was this little dog and everything around me was a perceived potential threat. I mean, my foot was as big as this dog, right? If everything around me could kill me accidentally by falling on me, by stepping on me, by dropping a cup of water on me, I would be in high alert all the time. And that's a lot like the nervous system. The nervous system, when we talk about fight or flight, a lot of people are in the state of something is about to hurt me. I don't know where it's gonna come from. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I have to be ready for it all the time. The nervous system, which should normally be somewhat regulated day to day, is sort of like this. All the body's energy and resources are at the surface. It's just looking, waiting, watching. It's waiting for the ball to drop. It's waiting for the hawk to come pluck the chihuahua you know, out of the garden. It's waiting for some bad news. The problem is you can't live like that very long. And I found myself in this fight or flight state for a very long period of time. A piece of why I was in that state was specifically because I was self-employed. Those of you that are self-employed or those of you that have high stress jobs or those of you that are maybe mothers and parents or single mothers or single parents, you know exactly the kind of stress that will be demanded of you because of the responsibilities that you have. But in a perfect world, you don't have to resort to medication that you may be on forever or antidepressants. There are some practices we can do in terms of lifestyle medicine. Now, before we jump into the actual seven foods, I wanna talk from a Chinese medicine point of view because it's very unique and very distinct. You know, when we talk about cortisol, let's remove this hormone because 5,000 years ago, people didn't know what cortisol was. And probably several hundred years ago, people did not know what cortisol was. But people saw the effects of adrenaline and cortisol and HPA axis dysregulation. Ancient people had panic attacks. Ancient people had chest tightness from anxiety. Ancient people had heart palpitations and arrhythmias. Ancient people had a high resting heart rate when they're under high periods of stress for long periods of time. These symptoms are not new, and yet, the way ancient doctors and traditional Chinese medicine described these was actually very interesting. So for example, when we talk about cortisol, we're talking about, let's just say adrenaline, right? We're talking about cortisol and adrenaline. When you acutely experience a shock, let's say the shock is your boss drops some papers on your desk Friday, you have a project due Monday. The first thing you may feel is your pulse quicken, your collar tighten your <laughs> pressure in your head, the hypertension that's happening because you're so pissed off at your boss. What we're talking about in traditional Chinese medicine diagnosis is the heart. So sometimes when people have an elevated heart rate, tachycardia, palpitations, or they're noticing their heart a lot, even if the heart rate is not elevated, like on a smartwatch, this is what we call heart qi or heart yang deficiency. This is primarily a nervous system symptom. So when I think of the trifecta, I think of four key symptoms when we talk about nervous system dysregulation or HPA axis dysregulation. Elevated heart rate, particularly when you're not working or long after work. Palpitations or dysrhythmias. They're non-pathological, doesn't actually indicate anything with your heart most of the time. It's with the electrical signals. The third is insomnia. The fourth is anxiety. And I would say one more, uh, actual reflex zones, your jaw, the sternocleidomastoid muscles, and the suboccipital, base of the skull, being tight, and tightness in the chest. This cluster of symptoms are the square A1 textbook symptoms from my point of view, that there is significant nervous system dysregulation going on. One final diagnosis you might see, you could Google or see an acupuncturist, is what's called heart and kidney not communicating. It's not worth me going into detail to explain what the cultural origin of that is, but Effectively, it's like the anchor has been broken and the main symptom is typically insomnia. So heart and kidney not communicating is like your anchor that allows your nervous system to stay in parasympathetic has been broken and now your nervous system is just 
boom, 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 boom. We can't descend into sleep, right? We say wired for a reason, or we say tense. Now, lots of other symptoms fall into different organ diagnostic patterns, and I've put together a really cool quiz. It's just called the Root Cause Quiz. According to traditional Chinese medicine, your symptoms are probably coming from here. It's a 10-page handout I've put together. It's completely free. It's the link right below this video. And basically, we go organ system by organ system, right? These are your typical differential diagnoses in medicine, and what's called a pattern differentiation in traditional Chinese medicine. So you can actually go download that quiz, check it out. It's really insightful and really interesting. We actually hyperlink to probably our top five or 10 videos that talk more about that specific symptom more. So there's a lot of material in there for free. So check it out. Now let's talk about our top seven herbs and foods. Remember here we're talking about mostly food grade medicine. We're not talking about the clinical herbalism where we're using very high doses that are 10 to 20 times what you would normally supplement with. Herb or supplement or food number one is, you guys are lucky, dark chocolate. So a study actually found that consumption of dark chocolate was found to reduce cortisol levels in individuals experiencing high levels of psychological stress. Number two, blueberries, or berries in general, blueberries, strawberries, that kind of thing. Now in one study, they found that the antioxidants in berries themselves can reduce oxidative stress and inflammation, which are associated with elevated cortisol levels. Food number three is green tea. In this particular study, researchers found that L-theanine, a compound in green tea, has been shown to promote relaxation and reduce cortisol levels. Number four is avocados. So believe it or not, the fats in avocados have lots of health benefits. In one study, they found that the healthy fats and potassium in avocados can help regulate your blood pressure and actually lower cortisol levels. Number five, fatty fish like salmon and mackerel. Now in this particular study, researchers found that the omega-3 fatty acids in particular that are in fatty fish have an anti-inflammatory property that can help reduce cortisol levels themselves. Number six is garlic. Now, garlic, a common kitchen spice, has been found in studies to have compounds that can reduce cortisol levels in response to stress. And number seven is spinach. So spinach is one of those plants that is naturally high in magnesium, which by itself can help reduce cortisol levels by improving relaxation and reducing stress. So foods aside, there are lots of herbs that we tend to use clinically the most as well. Now, I don't think you should think of use this herb for this hormone. I think that is the wrong thinking clinically. When someone comes in with stress symptoms, let's say elevated heart rate, heart palpitations, anxiety, insomnia, I don't think this herb treats high cortisol because there are all kinds of correlations that can relate to the subjective feeling of stress. It can be related to adrenaline, it can be related to serotonin, right? It can be related to neurotransmitters, it can be related to gut health, right? A high percentage of neurotransmitters are produced in the gut, serotonin in particular. and. For some people, it's totally bizarre. You fix their digestive system. Once the gut dysbiosis is gone, the clinical anxiety is gone almost overnight, within a couple months, a symptom they had for a decade. So we always wanna do this sort of pattern differentiation. There are a few herbs in particular that I see help much more with subjective feeling of feeling stressed. Clinically, what I use most often is a high dose of medical grade cinnamon bark called Rogue Rogue is the single most common herb I use in formulas at a high dose that gets people off antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, can regulate your heart rate in place of a beta blocker. Tons of my patients come in that are young that don't have heart problems, but have palpitations and they're on beta blockers. This is a crime. That should literally be a crime in medicine, but they have nothing else to offer. This kind of thing can get them off beta blockers. The second is a mushroom called poria, fooling. Poria, there's an interesting study done on rats experiencing anxiety. So the researchers did a horrible study where they make rats tread water until basically they can create a drowning-like response in their physiology, so a panic response. They found that the rats they gave fooling to that had this anxiety response from stress, the fooling was working on serotonin like an antidepressant or anti-anxiety medication. So poria, fooling, is a common mushroom we end up using in certain kinds of anxiety and certain kinds of heart palpitations. Other herbs that can really help are red chen ginseng. Ginseng is very good at stabilizing the HPA axis. So in Chinese medicine, it's fascinating we don't really use it for stress and anxiety primarily. We primarily use it for digestive problems involving, you know, pancreatic enzymes, bloating, SIBO, dysbiosis. But in naturopathic and functional circles, they use ginseng primarily more for the HPA axis I've seen. So interesting sort of off-label use there that's not uh, typically in traditional medicine what we use. Those are some herbs that can really, really turn the tide when it comes to stress. Now, if you guys didn't know, I work with a limited number of new patients every single month in my practice in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. If you guys want to reach out, just go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic. The link 
for the email, my phone number, the clinic information is right below this video as well. And then don't forget, I've also put together this link for that root cause quiz if you want to know exactly what pattern your symptoms are coming from. So make sure you check it out. And I have a final video right here on herbs that you can use for stress as well. So check that out.